Hey, everybody. Dave Archer here, Atlanta Falcon Radio Network. We've been breaking down the top 20 players, I think, available in the draft. Our value board. Who are the best available in the draft 1 through 20? Now, we've done 6 through 20. We're now going to give you our top five right here at AtlantaFalcons.com. Here are the top five. Now, this is not how they go in the draft. This is how I think they stack up as far as the best players available, the value board. Let's look at number five on the board. It's Pene Sewell, the offensive tackle at Oregon. Six foot six, 325 pounder. If you watched him play, and I hope you have, this is a kid that opted out in 2020. But 2019, he doesn't look like an offensive tackle. He looks like the way he moves, he looks like a tight end. This kid can run. He has outstanding athleticism. Again, getting to that next level in the run game is outstanding in space blocking. Or this is your left tackle. So if a left somebody's coming off that left tackle side, he's probably a pretty good pass rusher. This kid has great skills to pass it. He's got long arms and a tremendous punch. The thing that I think sticks out about Pene Sewell is he's such a good athlete that you're going to get kind of caught from time to time. Those guys on the edge are outstanding players. They're going to catch your edge and knock you off balance. He's athletic enough to recover. And that's we talk about that with corners. Remember, corners can beat the line of scrimmage, and they got recovery speed. This kid has recovery athleticism to where if he does get beat to the edge, he has a tremendous job of getting back on his block and protecting the quarterback. Pene Sewell, the offensive tackle, Oregon, 6'6", 325, Outstanding player. He's one of those top five guys, I think, available in the draft. Let's go to number four. Number four, Jamar Chase, the wide receiver, LSU. Now, this is a kid that blew the doors off of it in 2019. He's 6'1", 200 pounds. He didn't play last year. Again, we've got another opt-out. So here's a kid, much like Pene Sewell at five, did not play this season because of obvious reasons, the pandemic, the worries, and all the things that went with that. He began preparing for uh, the National Football League, and he is ready to roll. This is a kid that is not just a up-the-field guy or just because Joe Burrow was his quarterback in 2019, he lit it up. Now, this is a kid that has all the skills. He runs outstanding pass routes. He has decent short area quickness. He has the ability to run by you, and his ball skills are the best that I've seen at the wide receiver spot as far as the wide receivers go. His ability to go up the ladder and make that 50-50 catch Jamar Chase is that kid. He can line up inside. He can line up outside. He's not just exclusively an outside receiver. So the versatility that he brings to the table is something that I think a lot of teams are going to value. I've got Jamar Chase as my number four value guy in the draft. Now let's go to number three. That number three, Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. 6'3", 246 pounds. Now we've got a reoccurring theme here. He opted out in 2020. He did not play. But if you put on the tape in 2019, he lit it up. He was all over the field, sideline to sideline. Now, this is an old school size guy at 6'3", 246, with new school uh, type of abilities. He ran 439 at his pro day at 6'3", 246, and had a 34 inch vert. Tremendous athleticism. When you start talking about fast and physical and versatile to be able to run sideline to sideline. The thing that this guy adds to his, his, his arsenal is his ability to rush the passer. This is a kid that I could see playing sideline to sideline on first and second down. And you could see this guy rotating up and coming off the edge and creating some problems or coming through the middle. He has tremendous timing on blitz. Uh, and he has a really good knack for coming off the edge as a pass rusher. Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State, number three on the value board. Number two on the value board, Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. This kid, this kid is fun to watch now. He's got great size. He's got a position. He's position flexible, meaning he can line up outside. We see some of the modern day tight ends now that line up outside the numbers. Offensive coordinators will get them isolated on a strong safety or linebacker. You better put a corner on this kid because this kid runs and, and plays like a wide receiver at six foot five, 235, 240 pounds, ran 4'4 four, four in his 40. Just a tremendous athlete and and a problem from a matchup standpoint. Obviously, the size, if he kicks inside, he can play the nasty split, which is three or four yards off the tackle. He can line up on the edge. Now, the one area that I would look at that might be something, and it's like any pass receiver that plays the tight end spot, 
is he's not a, a great blocker. He's serviceable blocker. And what we say about Tony Gonzalez, if he, Tony wasn't a great blocker, but he was serviceable. He could get up, and this kid can do some of those things as well. He's not a great blocker, but a nice, does a decent job of getting his hands on people. But what you're going to use him for is obviously in the passing game, he's a nightmare, matchup nightmare. Who are you going to put on him? You're going to put a linebacker who won't be able to run. Who are you going to put on him? Safety? Safety's not big enough. Corner's not big enough. He is a problem. He is the modern-day uh, weapon at tight end. Kyle Pitts checks in at number two on our value board. Number one on the list. We've gone all the way from one to 20. Here he is, number one, no secret, Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback from Clemson. Uh, I don't know that I've seen a more polished guy come out since maybe Peyton Manning. When you start looking at uh, everything he's done from the time he was a freshman all the way through to his junior year, you could see his growth. But he was ready to play his freshman year and, in fact, took over after about four games. Remember, Kelly Bryant transfers, leaves Clemson, goes to Missouri. Trevor takes over, and all he does is guide him to a national championship. They win the national championship his freshman year, and he had him in the mix every year after that. He's got all the size, 6'6", 225 pounds. He, he can run, so he's got the explosive uh, ability athletically. But he doesn't have any problem with any throw. Uh, he shoots it across the field. He, he can throw. The, he has, throws with touch, throws the ball down the field. I think the only question mark you have is sometimes he trusts his arm too much. And this is some of the things. I'd rather have a guy that feels like he can fit it in there and I'll choke him back than a guy that doesn't feel like he can make that throw, right? This kid can make all the throws. All we're going to have to do is kind of correct some of the decision-making and say, hey, let's not take that chance. Let's not take that shot right here. Trevor Lawrence, number one on the value board for me, I think for a lot of people. Trevor Lawrence probably sitting there at number one. There you go. There's one through five. We've given you one through 20. Love to hear back from you. Archer QB16, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, we'll talk about it, chop it up. You give me your one through 20. Love to hear from you. But it's all right here on AtlantaFalcons.com. Thanks for listening.